Hey, Peter. Hey, Adam. You got rhythm? I got rhythm. Bam. I've got rhythm. I've got rhythm. No. <laughs> I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. You know, sometimes you do your funny jokes, and I I don't think they're very funny, and I don't react at all. Why and are you calling them funny jokes, then? I, I, well, because uh, funny. Sorry, air quotes funny. Okay. But sometimes uh, you legit get me. Come on, man. Like, that That's was good. That's how I do it. That's that how I do it. That was spontaneous. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so today we're talking about, so, well, first of all, it's kind of a special day, right? Because, you know, we've had a lot of movement on You'll Hear It Premium. A lot yes. of folks have bought into the You'll Hear it Premium. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. Yes, thank you. And you do, do you, fun fact about You'll Hear it Premium, we're coming up on two months now, maybe three. Yeah. Uh, no one has ever left. I don't know if we can keep that going forever because <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody's going to like, you know, have an expired credit card or something. But so far, knock on wood, everybody well, stay uh, with yeah, us. You might have just reminded some people that they could leave. So. Yeah, don't leave. Don't yeah. leave. We need you. Well, no. So we wanted to just kind of give a shout out to our You'll Hear it Premium members. And then Yo, shout out. But oh, also, is that it? Okay. but also, you know, for the premium members, uh, at least once a month, we give them a premium episode over the piano with some PDF worksheets on what we're working on. Yeah, and we thought we would kind of tease that a little bit today mm-hmm. to show people who haven't jumped into the premium membership, which is very affordable, by the way. Affordable. What you're going to get? Not only will you get the full archives and discounts on swag and a yeah. and a personal email from Rachel Morgan. Really? <laughs> I didn't know about that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Rachel, that's that's on you now. <laughs> uh, but no, we, we we have these premium episodes. So we yep. thought we'd give you kind of a mini premium episode. We're not going to be over the piano, but we do have our lovely key station here. So this is normal instead of premium. I can see, this what, is like, I see what's happening. This Down. is like uh, mediante. <laughs> <laughs> that's like when we get on the airplane, you know, traveling a lot. Occasionally, uh, I've been known to receive an, an upgrade, which I never take for granted. I'm always very excited to have that. But then when I go back to coach, I, I never call it coach. Did you know that? No, what do you call I it? I call it garbage class. Oh, <laughs> my god! And, you know, like United and Delta have this, like, slightly better, like, yeah. economy comfort. I don't call I call it garbage plus. Garbage plus. <laughs> <laughs> there's first class, then there's garbage, there's garbage plus. Oh, my That's God. That's the three classes. Oh my god. But not here. We've got You'll Hear It. We've got You'll... You'll hear a premium. We've got something in the middle. Yeah, which is today. Which You'll is hear what, it garbage plus. Kind of give you a little <laughs> bit more just to, to show you what, what's going on over there at You'll Hear It Premium. Also, I don't want you to be intimidated, Adam, yeah. but I'm kind of going to be for the first time looking down on you just so you know because I'm I'm working on my posture. I don't know if you've noticed uh, this. Yeah. I've, I appear in video and still photography as shorter than you yeah. only because of my bad posture. So you're just not standing up straight. I'm not, but now I am. So I just didn't want you to be intimidated. This, is cra- this might be a princess bride situation because I also do not stand up Uh-oh. straight. So <laughs> ready? Watch, watch the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and someone's higher again. Oh, okay. okay. No. I do slouch quite a bit. Yeah. I think all pianists have a little bit of... Except for classical pianists. They have right. that... They're so uptight. That straight they, back. Know, big shout out to the classical pianists. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so we've gotten a couple of emails recently about rhythm changes and how to deal with rhythm changes. Mm. So we thought, hey man, sorry, my pushing. Oh, back up, I bet I'm not gonna remember. We got this. logistics in the podcast. No, we got, we got a here. PDF here on the I table. I got my glasses here, so. off, so I can barely see. That's what's happening. Uh, so we've, we've been asked like how to deal with ry- rhythm changes. I think rhythm changes is actually, man, for me, I don't know about you, but like people talk about Coltrane changes yeah. or like you know Wayne Shorter tunes or whatever. But rhythm changes is like a lifelong pursuit of damn, this is. Hard. It's tricky. Hard AF. Super I agree. Super tricky. I think it's, yeah. I mean, we've talked about this a little before, so this will be fun to kind of do a little bit of a deep dive. But I, I really think that the the tricky, in it, the, I mean, for me, I've gotten, and I think you too, I mean, we, you know, we've been doing this for a while, so it does start to get easier. But I, I think it's not one of those things that instantly kind of clicks right. for anybody. Like it's right. always there. Yeah, you, you learn the, you learn the form, you feel comfortable with it, but in terms of really feeling free, I mean, there's always different things that we, like if I was going to play rhythm changes in E right now, I would not feel totally free, like the oh, same man. as I am in F or B flat or totally. C or whatever. It takes but, work. Yeah. But you start to kind of learn the form, but I think it's just such a circular cyclical kind of situation where you're hanging around almost hanging around that tonic so much it's like oh you know where's it going and then you get to the bridge you're like ah finally and then the bridge is over it's like oh back to this garbage again yeah yeah i mean yeah. sorry no that no got a little harsh there but. The, but what's great about rhythm changes is that with that bridge it really teaches you how to build tension within the form that's one yeah. of the great things about it but i think the trickiest part about it 
is how, to your point of how tonic heavy it is, yeah. but also the changes move in small chunks, in yeah. two beat chunks, right? Yeah. So you have, uh, typically you might have B flat major six or major seven, then G seven flat nine, then yeah. C minor seven, then F seven. So for a lot of people, it feels like it's hard to connect the dots in those short chunks. And I found, and I don't know about you, it sounds like to me when you play, when I hear you play uh, short chunked changes, I think I just coined that term. Short chunk changes. Short SCC. chunk changes. Uh, you better check with the SEC before you coin that change. That it seems like players who can really burn over this stuff have little two beat modules of a change, right? Mm. To connect the dots between one change or the other. I'll show you what I mean. So I have here four different examples uh, of the first four bars of B flat rhythm changes. Mm. Um, and so the idea was if, if I, if, and this is just an exercise I did, I wrote it out and I think some of you might find it useful that if I have a starting note, in this case, B flat, what's a four note module, eighth notes, two beats module that will get me to a chord tone of G seven flat nine, which is the next chord, right? So here's my B flat. So if I'm starting here, you know, for me, the simplest one that came to mind was just, Right, just straight down. Timing the, it out a little bit. Exactly. The adding that chromatic step between the G, so B flat A G, and then a chromatic step down to the F, which is the seventh of G seven, right? Okay, so from here, what's my four note module? So I have here on number one. So this is another way you can do it. Instead of going up or down a scale, you can do a broken mm -hmm. chord. In this case, it's a uh, it, it's a diminished chord or a flat nine. Mm -hmm you know, a seven flat nine chord on G. F, and then down to A flat, B natural, D, and that leads me to either E flat or C. We'll say C. Yeah. And then once I'm here at the C, uh, I can do this one, which is, we'll call this a little turn. Right, surrounding yep. a note. Uh, and then that takes, this will this will be my starting note for F, and on F we'll go 13. back. The 13, right, we'll go back down and surround uh, the tonic. So then the whole thing ends up sounding like this. You know, it's very formulaic or whatever, but those little modules, those ideas of, of having a, a knowing how to get from one place to the other. In, yeah. in any yeah. prescribed beat. And you can do this in a million different ways. I did it in, f I did kind of the same shapes in four different places in the chord. Like if, then if you start it, instead of B flat, if you start it uh, e, uh, D, you know, you can get same shapes and the same thing starting in F and then in G as well. So there's ways that you can, you know, similar ways you can get from one chord tone to the next with all of these things. And yeah. there's like a million different ways to do it. Yeah, yeah. But I think this is, you know, something that you mentioned at the beginning really, really explains this, connecting the dots. Right. Like that's this way of playing. Because I think, if anything, people that kind of level one to being, um, you know, for any instrument or vocalist, kind of being comfortable with rhythm changes is doing very kind of open melodic riff bass. I'm thinking like bop, 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 you know, which yeah. is great. And it's like in the time, um, but you're having space. The, ch the changes are going by and, and, you know, to this point of it hovering around, or as you said, tonic heavy. Yeah. You can do that. You can actually do that all the time. And that's a great, a great way to play. But this is sort of that maybe next entry point for folks when you're going to play. I mean, basically what you're showing is continuous eighth notes. So it's like, how do you play those without just, automatically changing to the exact scale for that next chord because then you end up kind of just playing a major scale actually right <laughs> pretty well, much and this, this is what we've heard from people who've written in it's like how do i sound like i'm not just playing in b flat right. the whole time and and the idea is to to really um and this is i think this is still kind of like level 1a right mm -hmm. is you're sort of outlining the changes with these little modules now you don't ever want to just play straight eighth notes like this you wouldn't like i mean you, you would sometimes but well but maybe if you if you didn't start right on the right. one then you can get away with it more sure you know sure I mean? or start you, on the and a one you spend a chorus and a half you know doing what you yeah. were saying and then you can kind go you know start start burning as this happens right. but this is great i think this is a good exercise to get into of like how many different ways can i go from the c minor seven to the f there's you know Eight. there's 
you know, the classic. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a ton of different ways. And, yep. and what are those ways? And if I can do that in the C minor to the F, can I do that in the B flat to the G? Is it the same shape for the G7 to the C minor? Yep. All those things, uh, I think, are are important to work through. And I think these will be good for folks. You can go, are they going to have the, is this going to be available to them? Yeah. So or is they, that just a premium? No. Thing? You, they, everybody's going to get this PDF, uh, but this will be. Well, what, what, what's the difference between premium and normal then? Man? Why, why, We're why over at the piano and there's a lot oh, more. There's true. a lot okay. more. I just want to show people. This what, guy's generous, man. No, no, he's no, on my toes. I like it. What is yeah. what does premium look yeah. like? Well, it looks a little bit like this. So I think too for folks to think about, like if you're practicing these and and look any kind of you know sort of exercise or conceptual way of playing, the the, the key is to not take this and, and string it into a solo. So try these out, get used to the, how they feel in your hands, get used to how they sound laying over the chords. But then you can think about you know, omitting a note here or there or whatever to get out of that continuous totally. eighth note thing. Totally. Like, you're, you're still almost kind of hearing it. Or just omitting the first note. Like, like you can get away with, I found, playing a lot of continuous eighth notes. First of all, if you're swinging and playing good, you can just play straight through. If you look at John Coltrane on Giant Steps, there's a lot of oh, yeah. continuous melodic eighth note playing. Some except of these he had to breathe. Some of these shapes, too, actually. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, like, if you're if you're going, you know, if you're going one, two, three, four, it, it starts to be kind of melodically monotonous. It, I mean, um, kind of the the melodic rhythm almost of it has become so monotonous. But if you're just like one, two, three, four, do biddy 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 bid and just start on that end of one, you could even do some of these same lines and just offset them a little bit. Totally. Maybe went to one C. I don't know. No, that's but, getting one C. But that's yeah. yeah, that's the next step for sure. And 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 yeah, you kind of want to maybe master some of these first, but always be thinking about ways that you can shift things and omit things, offset whatever rhythmically, because that's kind of the magic to these same you know, sometimes we think, oh, I already know that little part. It's like, yeah, but do you really know how to apply it yeah. and use it and make it hip and, and use it as a jumping off point, a springboard for you to play some other stuff after? That's the magic with these kind of phrases. It's not about just putting them together the same way each time. Yeah. It's having them part of your totally. vocabulary. Well, and really, and, if, and thinking about them, you know, I think about them almost as modules, yeah. right? That So they're so even though I wrote one that was strung out for the, the whole first bar, I would take any of these. I on, remember when a great pianist was strung out for way more <laughs> than a few bars, but like that I was could, a different problem. I could Take, like if I take that, I'll, I could just take that one and do like a, you know, and now I have like an actual phrase of music, but yeah. that module is right there. You know what I mean? Or I can combine one or two or just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think having these four note sort of modules, for lack of a better word, helps us to... I don't know if it's lack of a better word. You've used about 30 times so far today, sir. It's a pretty good word. Yeah. It's a pretty good word. Module. But uh, it, for me, it just helps me uh, to to expand my melodic content yeah. as I'm playing, like really to hear things. You know? Absolutely. And you know, sometimes, uh, I mean, I'll still find myself hearing certain things and then trying to like figure them out or play them. And I'm shocked how much relatively basic melodic modules, little chunks of music, riffs, whatever, that, like, it feels like I've never played it before, at totally. least not in that situation. Totally. It's almost like, we shouldn't we have gone through... Because, I mean, like, that that's the thing. When you start to look at rhythm changes a little differently, like we were talking about at the beginning, it's like, oh, it's so monotonous because it's just hanging around the tonic area. But then when you do start to look at it a little bit differently and, and realize the possibilities, I mean, you can go decades and still be discovering new things. And that's what makes it interesting. And then just moving something around or playing it a little bit differently can be like whole new, you know, melodic vocabulary, really. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks, everybody. Uh, I think we had three people in the last few months write in about rhythm changes. It's thanks. one of our most common questions. I mean, forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, it's, it's something I practice on the regular, too. So, yeah. You know. And I mean, one little, one little bonus thing I want to throw in, or should I do that at the end? No, you got it. Oh, you want to do a bonus yeah, thing? I'll do, I'll do a bonus do right. at the end. We'll, we'll do it. We'll bonus do a little, rhythm changes. One more plug. Uh, you can get more stuff like this over at You'll Hear It Premium. Yeah. Uh, check that out. Support the podcast. Yeah. Go to You'll Hear It.com. For sure. Check out the blog, which is free, of course. Lots of stuff like this on the blog as yep, well. Yep, so. yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are brought to you by Open Studio, which is uh, holding this whole thing together like a like a super glue that's yeah, still, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, we're really excited to be here continuing on this, this You'll Hear journey. And uh, I'm going to give a little bonus that I actually thought of as you were showing something uh, for Rhythm Changes playing. Yes, sir. Um, and that is, if you think about, you know, some of the common times for us to get um, anxious is when, you know, you use that substitution if you go B-flat major mm -hmm. and then you go to um, maybe B fully diminished oh. next. 
instead of the G7. Yeah. You know, a lot of people just because it, they feel more restricted on a diminished than they do on a dominant. But think about that B diminished, even if the bass player goes there or if you played or whatever, as a G7, either, um, you know, kind of flat nine, flat 13, even over that B. You know, because yeah. the dominant, like that's the dominant chords is where we always have some flexibility. Yeah, altered, half whole, those kind of things. Whereas diminished, we, we kind of tense up. But you can always layer that dominant into a diminished. And I think about it as a major third before, but, you know, above it, I mean, below it. So like a B diminished would be a G7. Yeah, me too. Yeah, exactly okay. right. Yeah, because, because, yeah, often in some functional harmony. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's that root movement. So. Totally. Cool. Go. All right. Well, until tomorrow. You'll hear it.